It's safe to say that CCD is making a comeback in modern times amongst enthusiasts, prosumers, and even professionals alike. And that could be for good reason. A lot of people swear that CCD color rendition is more true to real life than you'd find in modern CMOS sensors. And even pros would swear by the latter of the two cameras I'm talking about today when it comes to portrait work. We'll talk about that later, but right now I want to introduce you to two pioneers of the CCD sensor, which would be the Nikon D100 and D200. The reason I'm doing these two cameras together, aside from being Nikon, is you're gonna find them in about the same price bracket today. Now, they're two very different cameras, the latter of the two being the D200. You might, in fact, you will see a performance boost, different ergonomic philosophy, and so forth, but that doesn't mean the D100 should be discounted and written off this list, because there's still perks to this that the D200 doesn't have, in my opinion. So first, we're going to talk about the D100 here. Now, this came out in 2002 with a whopping 6 megapixel sensor. Now, you heard that right. And if you're looking at this camera, you're not getting it for monster megapixels or full frame joy. In fact, it's a crop sensor camera from 2002. But what you are getting is a relatively small, plasticky feeling, lightweight camera that produces those CCD sensor colors that you've come to know and love. Now, if we look under the hood, we can see that the D100 here uses a 1.8 inch APS 6 megapixel air mosaic style sensor, which kind of makes sense because at 6 megapixels, all your images are going to look like mosaics, right? Just kidding. I think 6 is plenty of megapixels when it comes to social media marketing anyways, or if you're just posting to Instagram. The camera came out at a whopping 2,000 bones, and the body's based off of the Nikon F80 film version of the camera. Well, what does that mean in today's market? Well, the camera is routinely sub $100, which means you can pick it up pretty cheap and invest the rest of your money in good Nikon glass and just get to shooting. When it comes to operating this camera today, just expect process processing to be a bit slower than you're used to if you're coming from a newer model camera. And I know that's a broad generalization, but you'd be surprised at how slow some of these old sensor cameras are. Uh, some of the real cons I'm talking about today in 2023 and beyond with the D100 would be the abysmal battery life, the somewhat unreliable autofocus you might be running into, and a lot of these older cameras tend to get the surface stickies, so you might get a lot of your cat hair stuck to the sticky grips. Now to transition to the 200, which came out three years later, that body feels a lot more professional than the Grandpa D100 does. They really made leaps and bounds and improvements across the board with the D200, and I almost feel like it's still a modern competitor on the professional market when we're talking about certain groups of photographers such as portrait workers. And if you go on a lot of message boards, a lot of people still swear by the D200's color rendition amongst a sea of modern CMOS and megapixel monster cameras today. And for good reason. When I took portraits of the D200, it has this very distinct look and color roll off that I feel like can't be replicated with a lot of CMOS sensors. That's just my opinion. But what is objective when it comes to the D200 is the body is magnesium alloy and it feels so much more professional in the hands when compared to the D100 here. And what I was saying about the slow performance speed of the D100, the D200 is a lot more snappy and it feels more instantaneous when shooting raw. So what I'm saying is the D200 just feels like more of a performer and competitor in today's market with more modern cameras than the D100. And to backpack, the D200 has a four megapixel boost in resolution, which means it's a 10 megapixel camera and it has two card slots. I mean, one's an SD and the other's a CF, but it's good enough, right? And you can still find the D200 sub $100 in today's market. So which of the two cameras would be for you? Again, it comes to preference. I would say get the D200 if you're looking for something more professional and serious, and the D100 if you're just looking for a lightweight body you can take pot shots around town with and enjoy nostalgic looking imaging. But I don't think you would be disappointed if you pick up one or the other, and it more or less depends on what you're looking for. Do you want a more professional magnesium alloy, weather sealed body with faster shooting and more resolution? The D200 might be your huckleberry, but if you're looking for just that classic CCD look, a lightweight camera you can 
just carry around and have fun with the D100 might be your choice. But it comes down to preference, like I said. Either way, they're both great cameras and they represent the CCD heritage very, very well in today's market. So if you wanna see pictures I've taken today on this channel with these two cameras, head over to Matt's Notes Instagram and start a fight in those comments. Subscribe to this channel for more content like this. Thank you for watching. Please come back and I'll see you next time.